This video is for everyone in the entire world, be that if you're in the US, Europe, Asia, anywhere in the world, this video is about Project Mercury and why it's going to be the most important smart home tech standard ever created. This is going to be the most important standard since Bluetooth. And now I'm telling you this now because if you are a user, you might have doubts on Project Mercury, which is what I did. I'm going to answer some of those questions in this video. You might be a utility company wondering whether you can sign up for Project Mercury. This video will answer those questions. And if you're a device manufacturer making anything grid connected and your device isn't going to be part of Project Mercury, you might want to think again. At the end of 2024, I was lucky enough to be invited to the Manchester Kraken office about the launch of Project Mercury. And what I can tell you from being there is that I learned that they have failed, Optimus have failed to deliver what this true Mercury consortium is. It's not going to be Octopus's pet animal. It is going to be free of Octopus, free of Kraken. It is going to be a true consortium of all utilities, all energy companies around the world, all device manufacturers. Everyone is open to join Project Mercury and it's not going to be under the single control of Octopus or Kraken. In fact, the most important thing here to stress is if you're a utility company, you don't have to use Octopus or Kraken's billing technology to be a Mercury consortium partner. They want to be like Bluetooth. The idea is they don't just want to simplify things for them. They want to simplify the thing for the whole utility. They're fully aware that people are going to sign up to tech of other utilities. But the plan is that we can all move our energy devices from utility companies to utility companies. Everyone's going to have the same standard around the world. This is going to be the most difficult, most interesting standard for the whole energy network worldwide. 2033 marks the point in which that we need to get Project Mercury fully finished and off the ground. This is a deadline of what the grids need worldwide. As more and more people move towards electric cars, electric car bans around 2030, and the transition from gas heating to electric heating all over the world as we move away from gas, we need to sort the power networks out. Now, there's two options. There's option one, which is we've spent a millions and millions of pounds upgrading all the power lines, all the transmission lines all over around the world, the UK, Asia, Europe, but there's just not that kind of money. There's too much money to spend and it's just not feasible. The other option is grid flexibility and that's using stuff like Project Mercury plan to do, which is where the energy and utility companies will bargain when they're going to use the energy depending on what supply is available on the grid. So save customers millions of pounds of infrastructure cost and reflect that in the bills by taking control of some of the heating devices, car charging devices, just modulating that a little bit to save the grid an absolute fortune. It's really important to note that Mercury will not be taking over from any existing standards that are already there. They don't plan to take over Zigbee. They don't plan to take over anything that's already existing. They plan to work alongside it or possibly adopt person's standards that are already there. For example, OCPP and chargers, that it has a lot of things that Mercury want in it, so they'll adopt part of that OCP standard within the Mercury consortium. The other thing Mercury want to do is they want to set basic specifications of what certain devices should be able to do. So to become a Mercury device, they will set a, a list of certifications, a list, a list of standards that you have to meet for your device to be listed as a Mercury compatible device. The idea is instead of manufacturers going off making their own standards, their own ideas of what they think utility company needs, utility companies around the world, part of the Mercury consortium will tell device manufacturers, if you want your device to be certified Mercury, we'll tell you what that device needs to do. Now, it's very important that we can probably guess a lot of the things that device manufacturers and Mercury utility partners will want that device to do. For example, batteries would expect them to turn on for a standard. So basically lots of wind, lots of solar turn on, soak up that excess power. And there's grid shortages turn off or discharge that power back to the grid. We can probably even expect batteries to maybe request that they do frequency response. So to see the frequency of Hertz drop below what the grid standard is, they start to kick out a little bit more 
power to kind of bring that frequency back up. We can also expect EV chargers to have much of the same thing, sort of turn off, turn on. Uh, maybe if the frequency goes too high, they all turn on. If the frequency goes too low, they all turn off. That kind of thing. Heat pumps. Again, people are a bit funny about how warm or cold they want the home. So what the problem with heat pumps is they'll modulate down when there's low grid demand, when there's high grid demand, and modulate up when there's obviously lots of available energy and they want to soak it up and stop the grid from you know browning out because there's too much power. So we kind of expect these two things to happen, coincide and adjust with them. Now, it's also really important that us, the customers, get a benefit out of what's happening to Mercury, which is why I'm going to explain what that is in a minute. But first, what's the point of you being a device manufacturer, being a Project Mercury partner? If you display Mercury on your device, what it's telling a customer is that it's going to work with their other Mercury devices. Now that might not be important from day one, but it will be important if they're gonna buy your battery product, your EV charger, your heat pump, that when they buy your device first, they know in two, three years time when they buy their next device and that has Mercury on, they're going to talk and behave with each other in the cloud somewhere virtually controlled by a Mercury utility partner or a Mercury control partner. Because at the end of the day, it might not be utility partners that are controlling all these devices. Someone might sign up to a third party power control system, virtual power, uh, power network that controls these. But the idea is they can know within their level of trust that they can move any of these devices to be controlled together. You can concentrate on making stuff that you're good at, heat pumps, battery chargers, EV chargers, and Mercury will help keep the customer and the standards all within line that they all work and do something together that's important for grid control. Now, the other thing for you've got to look at is if a customer buys your EV charger, for example, and it currently works on Octopus Intelligent, and they decide to leave Octopus and go to another energy company, they want to know that when they take that EV charger with them, they don't lose that level of smart control. And that person signed up to be a Mercury partner, that they can then take control of that charger and use it in that intelligent way that was used on Octopus. And the important part here is they don't have to be a crack and billing system. Octopus really want Mercury to work. It's a true consortium for you utility companies to all use, as well as use device manufacturers to use as well. I asked a couple of questions, and the question is, what's going to be the benefit for the customer? Because if the utility partners and the device manufacturers have took control of our Mercury devices, and they're turning off and on our systems batteries, wearing out our batteries, charging our batteries, discharging our batteries, we need to see a benefit. You know, it can't just be that they got all the cream and we just don't get anything. There needs to be some kind of financial benefit. Now, it's too early to say what any of the utility partners will decide on, but it's more than likely we'll all see a financial benefit somewhere. At the end of the day, the choice of you, a customer, buying a Mercury device is up to you. But if you do buy a Mercury device, it's not saying you have to give them control of that Mercury device. That's going to be your choice to enroll it with whatever utility partner you want to. Because again, the other day, you could buy those Mercury devices and never enroll them. You just know that they're there in the future if you did want to sign up to a Mercury device. You could even move to a company that isn't on Mercury. So that's the point is, you as the user have got the full control there. Whether you decide to sign that up in the future for financial benefit would be up to you and the incentives that those utility partners offer you. Now, one thing that massively impressed me was seeing all these companies descend on Manchester, a little hometown of mine, by the way, all descending there to discuss Mercury. There was people all over the world. There was Germany, Japan, there was America. There was loads of American state people. There was people from the UK. There was device manufacturers from all over the world, China, you, you know, Asia. Everyone was there at Manchester to discuss Project Mercury. Why? Because they all see how important Project Mercury is. And if we don't get a standard in place for all these utility companies, we're going to be left in a little bit of a limbo with loads of different standards all trying to fight for each other. This is why Mercury being open consortium is really, really important. So I know Bluetooth took over a decade to finalize when they got that off the ground and there was complications and issues with it not working. But eventually we got to a standard that we still use today, which is Bluetooth. Everyone's got Bluetooth now. Every device has Bluetooth. And the reason is it works so well. It's a standard that is truly standardized to work across platform devices, whether you've got an iPhone, an Android phone, a Bluetooth headphones from Beats, a Bluetooth headphones that you got from AliExpress, they all work on Bluetooth 
perfectly. And Mercury are fully aware that what they're planning to do in certification is much larger, much more complicated than what Bluetooth was. But they're fully aware that the risks and the benefits for everyone, not just utility companies, not just device manufacturers, but customers, there's a huge benefit for all of us for Mercury to succeed. And that's why I really hope that we see it get off the ground within maybe five to six years because I want to buy Mercury devices. I plan to revisit the Kraken office in Manchester, but not about Mercury, about other stuff that they want to do. So make sure you click subscribe and that notification bell if you want to see that. But basically they've got lots of equipment on test from heat pumps to EV chargers to EVs, and they're constantly working on tariff integrations and other weird, clever stuff down there. They do lots and lots of really interesting tech stuff. So I, I really plan to go back to their office and talk to them more and maybe even talk about what they plan to do with DNOs and sort of grid control. It's really, really interesting stuff. Now, if you want to learn more about my solar batteries, heat pumps and all that kind of stuff, I've done a playlist here. And if you want to learn more about heat pumps, check out this playlist right here.